Hello and welcome to the Social Recruiting Show. I'm Katrina Collier. I'm of course author of the Robot Proof Recruiter and I'm a speaker and facilitator. I'm of course joined by my gorgeous co-host, the very talented talent acquisition professional, the one, the only amazing <laughs> Lynn Martin. Hola. <laughs> Hi, and today we have a very special guest in my incredibly good friend, but also very talented. <laughs> You're not a very talented talent acquisition professional, though, are you? You're a very talented no. executive, executive coach and a sort of manager. That's a good way to put it, isn't it? Management mm -hmm. trainer. Uh, yes. The one, the only, the amazing Sue Ingram. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank to you. Welcome. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hello. Of course, I, of course, my courier turned up right then. I'm amazed we didn't have dog barking. Nope, there's dog barking. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. That would be some more robot proof recruiters turning up. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you hear him barking, he's going mental. So, um, this week we wanted to do something about the stress that certainly anyone who's been reading my posts has been seeing, um, but we're all feeling because this is an unprecedented time. So, do you want to maybe give people a reason why you're the perfect person to share some advice around that? <laughs> Okay. No pressure, um, no pressure. How did you end up doing what you do? Yeah, that's <laughs> being my good friend. Oh gosh, how long have you got? Okay, condensed version. My background's HR. I've worked in the city. In the city, it's very fast paced. We grow fast. We shrink fast. You all know this stuff mm -hmm. because you're all working for those types of organisations. Um, and in HR, I have been a communicator of difficult messages all of my life. And 20 years ago, I became an executive coach and a trainer of managers, helping managers to manage what to say and when to say it. And what was it now? Um, some years ago now, I wrote my book, Far Well, How to Fire Staff, so they say thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you forgot the plug. We do show the plugs on this show. <laughs> How to Fire Staff, so they say thank you. Um, because in my experience in HR, I have been able – I, I learned how to give tough messages, but in as positive a way as possible. And people don't believe that you can fire someone and have them thank you, but you can, and mm -hmm. that certainly happened to me and my clients. So the reason I'm on the call today is because we are living in difficult times. We're living in massively uncertain times. We're making it up as we go along. <laughs> what was true yesterday is not true today. Oh, yeah. my Lord. How can we? <laughs> Yeah, how can we uh, be calm? How can we be calm for ourselves, for our colleagues? Mm -hmm. If you're a manager of a team, how can you pass that on to your team? How can we come together at this time and mm -hmm. get through this together? Exactly. Um, and, yeah, one thing's for certain, it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. It's going to be different for the next 12 weeks or however long it mm -hmm. takes. It's going to be different on the other side of that as well. Yeah. But you know what? We can get through this and we mm. can survive. And how can we just realize that on a day to day basis, on a moment to moment mm. basis? It's so tough. When isn't we it? Need it. I mean, you think I put yeah. my question on Facebook, which was along the lines of if you're a business that's forced to shut and you people can't work remotely, they need people need to come mm. into the business. Like, so what happens? You know, do, do the employees have protection? And there were mm. seven or eight completely different responses because nobody there's just the no transparency nobody knows at the moment um uh legally you can only change an employee's contract of employment with their agreement yeah so mm -hmm. if you put them on short hours or lay them off with no pay or ask them to go on holiday with no pay can only be with their agreement yeah otherwise you have an obligation to pay them mm. um but the employment lawyers that i spoke with this week and actually only this morning, yeah. we're talking about, they figured that Boris would be making some announcements around that. Today. Because Boris is, he has a vested interest in every business keeping going because mm. they need to be, the, 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 the legal entity needs to be there in the future to pay taxation. Mm. So, mm. Um, uh, but there's undoubtedly very, very tough decisions that need to be made. Mm. And money just can't be manufactured out of thin air it comes out of people buying services and selling services and mm. those services sandwiches haircuts you know they're just not being sold at the moment yeah and that whole thing of don't go there but stay open it's just it's too mixed message 
Yes, um, at the moment, I mean, I believe that they will all close. Um, they have to close if we mm. want to save people's lives. Yeah. That's the first priority. Then the second mm. priority is ensure that as many businesses as possible survive mm. through this and come out the other side. But yeah. undoubtedly, all of us are going to have to carry some financial mm. burden for this. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I, I think that's where we've all been talking. So for those that don't know us, we're all freelance, mm -hmm. all three of us. So we're all deeply impacted by this. So even more so, not only are we talking about stress busting, it's also personal. I'm like actually sitting here going, sorry, what do I need to do to be calm? Uh, I've, had, I've had business cancel out of me. Um, yeah. You know, thankfully, uh, uh, mostly uh, postponed. Mm. So that means the money's going to come in at some point, but some I've point. got bills out now. So, yeah. Mm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I know. Yeah. That's, that's... So the thing to do, the thing, the thing, when things are uncertain, the most important thing to do is to stop and to remember what is still certain. Mm -hmm. What is mm. certain? Yep. What's certain is that we're well, What's certain is that we've got friends and family who will help mm. out and who we will mm. help out. Uh, what is certain is that, I don't know about you, but my street has been really brilliant. But they've really come mm -hmm. together. I'm meeting new friends I in know. my street. It's so cool. I'm having That's proper certain. conversations with neighbours. Yes. <laughs> Not uh, just well, hi, so. hi, <laughs> like actual. Uh, yeah. David Hockney put out a post the other day say, so, as a reminder. Remember, they can't cancel spring. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like... Yeah. Do you know what? Spring is still here. I'm going to give you in my garden this weekend. What else is certain? The sun is shining. Mm. I have still uh, have friends. Sorry, where are you? <laughs> so, there's this guy. There's lying, people. This guy. In London, it's not. Guy, it. guy, where are you, Glenn? Um, are you in, in uh, Norwich? Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Indeed. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, the spring's, you know, certainly sprung uh, in, uh, uh, certainly on the Suffolk coast. And um, just Sue, so you, you sort of touched upon it there in terms of leaders, managers, and certainly people that are responsible for businesses. Mm -hmm. Now, ultimately, these individuals are responsible for teams of people or employees. And I think, you know, a new way of working, the change that, that's kind of either coming or already started for, yeah, yeah. for sort of teams of people. And in your capacity as kind of an exec sort of coach, what advice would you give to those kind of leaders, managers, business okay. owners at the moment, you know, kind of to, uh, other, other than obviously, first and foremost, breathe, be calm, um, yeah. but then the actual process of, you know, kind okay. of getting business running um, again. Stay in close with your team. Stay in absolute co contact with your team. Get onto video conferencing as quickly as you can because you mm. can't manage by email. Email is such a dreadful way of, oh, of yeah. communication. Mm. Forget it. The best is exactly what we're doing here, which is some form of video contact with the teams all together. Start normalizing things as quickly as possible. If you if you um, if you have a team meeting every Thursday morning at nine, continue to have a video meeting every Thursday morning at nine. Mm. Normalize mm. it. Just continue, continue with what is normal, what's known, what's certain. Mm. Um, mm. If you're lucky and your team can work from home then mm. you will be continuing business anyway and you'll be continuing your normal business meetings via video. Mm. Mm -hmm. Please don't forget to include time over video for social chit-chat. Yeah, totally. And, Ooh, that's all and because if you think about it, when you call a meeting in, everyone comes into the meeting room, they come in with a cup of coffee, they've had a chat in the coffee room before, mm. they come in, they're mm. chatting about this, someone's saying, oh, you know, how is your dad now? Is he okay? Da -da -da. Mm. You know, all that social, this is the glue that actually holds yeah. individuals together. The danger Definitely. when we go into virtual meetings is that we have very functional meetings about mm. meeting client needs and doing this and doing that. But we don't mm. actually, unless we set time aside for it, have something mm. that is social chit chat. Actually, yeah. uh, Firefish Software did a great one. They showed a yeah. picture of they, she's discovered because mm. they're all remote now, uh, all of their animals. Yeah. So they've all had their cats mm. and dogs on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, which is Completely. again that that chit chat you're talking about. So it's, 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 it's almost that is providing the some glue. normal. That is the yeah. social yeah. humanity 
humanity glue that mm, holds yeah. the team together and you want a strong team there is an opportunity here to have a stronger team come out the end of this than went yeah. in the beginning and yeah. that's, if that's the opportunity people, right. you have got to seize yeah. even if the business changes dramatically mm. Mm. or god knows what kind of decisions might be down the road yeah. you've still got that team and that yeah. team mm. is fabulous um, the other thing and I think businesses is, are going to change. I think there's yes. a need to change. Yeah. I think if yeah. this virus is teaching us anything, it's enough of the me, 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 and a bit more of the we and the community and yeah. local and how can we change our business to have less of an impact, those sorts of things. It's about intention, intentionally being social, right? Mm. It's actually yeah. setting aside time. So I think yes. it's, perhaps that's probably easier for um, kind of knowledge workers like us um, yes. So one of the companies I'm working with at the moment, we've implemented uh, like a 15 minute uh, team check in every morning. Yes, um, exactly. That's and, it. Yes. And we've got like uh, virtual drinks on a Friday. Yes. So mm -hmm. everybody yes. sort of dials in. Um, <laughs> and you can make that a bit of fun. So to Katrina's point around Firefish, um, you know, kind of bring your dogs. This morning's yep. challenge for the 15 minute check in with um, you've got to up your t shirt game, hence why I'm wearing this. Right, so what is this? You know, I can't quite say it. What what is it? Untie dye horse. It's, yeah, it's very it's, pretty. Yeah. It's a it's a graffiti. I don't know why I'm going basically. like that. Like it's going to help me, but yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's it's so important, as you say, yeah. Sue, to just it intentionally is, it is that be social. Chit chat. Every know, single um, time. Audra just Audra just wrote a beautiful point about how she just got in touch with a friend, and I know Mark Hopkins is uh, talking on LinkedIn about talking to random random conversations with strangers in the supermarket. That doesn't Lovely. sound like social mm. distancing to me, but anyway. Um, but you would have seen uh, Mark Hopkins decided to do a sing-along last night, which was mm. not great for the first one. It was brilliant, but we need to get it better for the next week. But we used this. We used StreamYard to put it out and could actually mm. get people to jump in and come and sing. And it was going out on Twitter completely, and Facebook, completely. which, again, yeah. for all of the freelancers is a great way to bring oh, yeah. community together oh, as well yeah. Yeah, completely now the, the 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 next thing to do is a man if you're a manager is to have one-to-one -one with each of your team you're probably doing it already anyway but you know what i mean and and stay close to them because things change the kids are home next week is that going to yeah. change mm. how they work oh. the other thing is to set expectation you will do mm. a full working day each day you will do a full working day each day. If I'm paying you, you're going to do a full working oh. day each day. Can there be some flexibility around where? Yes, can they yes, back yes. because if kids are home, some of that working yeah. day is going to be at, at 8 o'clock at night because Ooh. the kids are just mm -hmm. rampaging around the house. Can know? I just make a request? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of you people with children yeah. who are complaining online about your children, think about the knock-on impact if you actually wanted to work remotely. <laughs> If if your boss you're giving your bosses an excuse to take it back off you later, just just a, it might be better to hide those to like really private chats rather than putting it on LinkedIn. Oh my god, my kids are getting in the way; they're driving me nuts. Because potentially you might want to work from home in the future, and then they'll go. Yeah. But your kids get in the way because you wrote this but you've here. Got, we've, we've all of us got to find out this solution. Say I'm a salaried worker. I'm working from home. I'm 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 a virtual worker. I'm a virtual team member. I want yeah. to make my contribution to my team. I want to maintain my employment that's kind of important and yeah, i've got kids right. at home well we've all got to figure out how that's going to work and there isn't going to be a cut a cut a, a cookie cut it cut answer to it is there? Mm. everyone's got different situations you know you may be yeah. able to you know oh, goodness knows what's going to happen so as a manager you need to stay in touch and then you need to i'm thinking here of a calendar maybe a team calendar where everyone kind of mm. says i'm available here i'm working at this these hours during the day, call me here mm -hmm. because I'll, you'll get an answer, but don't call me there because you won't get an answer because, yeah, mm -hmm. and all that kind of thing. Um, anything and anything that helps your team members get into a routine as mm -hmm. quickly as possible. Start establishing good, productive, normal habits around being at home. I love this. Yeah. Like, yeah. Your children or your co workers. <laughs> Treat them that way and see what shows up. I love that. And actually, Emily Bates has said a great thing over on LinkedIn as well. My daughter will be doing a full day of schoolwork. I have a timetable set up, which works with your timetable as yes. well. Yes. Because you can share it with your team, including PE. I'd like to see that, Emily Bates. Right. Yes. That could be quite <laughs> cool. It's but, important, actually. That's another, yeah. that's another stress bus, son. I've got some yeah. ideas on that one, too. Um, yeah. So uh, you have, this is exactly what you need to do. You're, 
-hmm. we individually and our, as managers encouraging our team members mm -hmm. set up and I'm dressing. This is weird, actually, Katrina, because Katrina knows me very well. I'm usually in grunge gear. Actually, I'm dressing up every morning now in work gear. Work, oh, this I, is work gear, darling. This is work gear. Oh. This is work gear. Um, because I just want that psychological mm. switch on, Sue. Yeah. Switch on. But also, you don't have uh, the dogs. So I have, I mean, because I've been doing this for 10 and a half years, you've been working remotely for years. I physically mm. leave the house. Walk, I mean, certainly banjo, poor Lance, it's only on a poo at this point. But I leave the house, I have a routine, I come back, mm -hmm. it's coffee, right now my day starts. Then I'm day, and at my desk and I'm ready to go. Yeah. Those that are new to virtual working will struggle and there'll be a lot of distraction, mm -hmm. daytime TV, kids, Facebook, all the rest of it. <laughs> Yeah, so we were talking too needy, we, <laughs> or just we kids were, under the ladder control. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were talking before we came on air, just around uh, just because your your kind of team are not in front of, they're not co-located with you now. A um, couple oh. of things that really shouldn't change is is your trust and faith in them, right? Um, and their trust, mm -hmm. your your trust and faith in them to continue to be productive. I know it's, you know, sometimes distance can you be... You have to go on trust a little piece. Now, the, yeah. the interesting thing is that when, you, when you're in the same location, you actually judge whether staff being productive by, the, by seeing them physically doing work, making phone calls mm. and all mm. that kind of thing. Now that we're mm. at distance, you're going to have to manage differently because you can't judge whether they're productive on just witnessing them doing tasks. Mm. So you now need to start talking about setting expectations. If, uh, you know, how many calls are they going? You're going to have to say very close individually to each of your team members. How's it going? What's happening? Are you having any difficulties? Um, and setting some, some goals, setting some goals for achievement. Because mm. when we are out of control, and we are out of control at the moment, we're in this massive unknown, it's, mm. I, I, it's, we need to give control back to people. Mm. The easiest way mm. to give control back to people is to set a little target and say, okay, mm. by next Tuesday, with their agreement, obviously, this. I want you to do, you know. And then you've got a chance mm. to say, well done, congratulations. Or you've got a chance to say, what got in the way? Oh, the kids, the kids just driven. You know, okay, let's start being creative about how, how you can we work. work. And do the kids, yeah. Mm -hmm. So see, I'm hearing that as someone who works for myself, going, I think that's like this week I've just lost the plot, mm -hmm. which is fine. I have given myself permission to have a week of pity party. It's okay, <laughs> um, but you know, like by the way, for those that don't know, I've also mm -hmm. lost like things like trips to Australia and Papua New Guinea that I was slightly excited about. Um, all More gone out the window. Anyway, 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 it'll all come back mm -hmm. later. Um, so I think I what I need to do is set myself some goals as well some mini goals just to like and maybe a treat at the end of it you know if i do this i get this completely, as a reward or completely just have up the give mood. yourself this reward give yourself this sense of achievement again because mm. if you get a sense yeah, of achievement sort of i'm that. in control i'm in control mm. I, 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 mm. I i you know we are still in charge of our own destiny it's just that there's been a bloody great big storm that's come in and blown mm. us off um, but we yeah. are still in charge of our own destiny, and yes. we can do that. So it's it's really it's really cool. It's really cool. Can I read Lewis's com comment out really yeah, quickly? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah. I just love it. So what I'm finding really interesting is that everyone is suddenly getting a lot more social, despite social distancing. Yeah, interesting, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Sorry, Glenn. Go. Yeah. I was just going to say, just to time box this a little, right? This change has been over a number of kind of weeks, right? It's mm -hmm. well, you know, quite accelerated over the last two weeks. So. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, let's try and put some context in the, in the timeline. Are you really going to, you know, immediately let two weeks, uh, you know, impact everything that's kind of come before and not even think about what's going to happen after? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just, I worry that some of the, to your point, Katrina, the, the kind the of knee-jerk knee reactions are, knee-jerk reactions to where we are in at the moment with little or no thought to perhaps what's going to happen mm -hmm afterwards because you know we've got to believe that things are going to get it will better. come back it will. and mm -hmm. we you know so th there is an element that we need to kind of maybe just take a step back um and i appreciate it's it's probably challenging because you know government guidance has been a little um mixed to a degree <laughs> and now we've got the daily well, briefings yeah, yeah the and same I think, that we're in that's kind yeah, of like, so 
I mean, we're being quite UK centric on this, you know, and obviously we have a global yeah. audience, yeah. but, you know, and, and at least um, yeah. tuning in for the US, but US is the same. I think it, there's very few company, countries that are getting really solid guidance. Yeah. Because Very, they don't uh, know. And don't to be know. fair, the, the the pandemic people, the experts in pandemics, they've got their models and, they, and they've trained for this forever. But they've got new data coming in every day about how this virus yeah. behaves. And mm. so their modelling is different every day. Mm. We are dealing with something that we don't know. Yeah. We've got, we've got a fair whack of knowledge around it, but we still... We still really don't know. I, I think you're right, Glenn. I think there needs to be a little bit more re remembering the human. That yes, but the, yeah. and hence, yes. you know, the stress and idea. Uh, the whole our whole aim at the moment is to save lives. So this is the self yeah. you know, distancing, social distancing. Mm. Then it will be to maintain our businesses and our economy, and the mental mm. health of our employees that will have massively <laughs> suffered through this. Though mm. not necessarily massively suffered, I personally think that it would be okay. No, I mean all the ones that will be financially crippled then. Oh, and the, and financial, will the financial pains will be significant for some. They yeah. undoubtedly will be. Having said all that, there is a load of things that you can do for free. Mm that can help your mental health. Mm -hmm. Breathe. Number, yeah, breathe. <laughs> number one is don't yeah. get, don't allow yourself to get whipped up. <sighs> yeah. Choose mm -hmm. who you want to listen to, you mm -hmm. know, news, mm -hmm. your news channel, your your feed, mm -hmm. your Facebook feed or whatever. Choose who yeah. you want to listen to and listen to them alone. Don't allow yourself to mm -hmm. get sort of, uh, because there's so much mm. conflicting advice out there at the moment. Just choose who you trust and who you want to listen to and listen to those people only. Mm -hmm. The second is specialised like hell. My, my my street is just having a ball at the moment. And we've got some really tough stuff on our street. We've got one, um, my neighbour up the road is in, in the midst of chemo. So she is in severe self-isolation. Mm -hmm. So she's sending out little messages, can somebody pick me? pick this up for me and we're leaving it on her doorstep and ringing the doorbell and then running away <laughs> because, <laughs> because she literally can't be yeah. anywhere close to anybody yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. cleaning stuff down when she brings it into the house she's cleaning it down with bleach mm. because she cannot have the virus so but yeah. so there's a whole thing of socialization that can really help us big time yeah. on that the i know thing, i know just my mood just being on this has gone up yeah Yes, from exactly. the moment we went into the green room until we went live, that so even in those five, ten minutes, just to see someone's face and feel their energy and yeah. laugh a little yeah. bit. Completely. Exactly. Completely. And, that, and that's what it should be around, you know, kind of morale boosting, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, you know this, Sue, right? In terms of when you go in, you work with leaders. Getting that really sort of positive morale, people being feeling really empowered when they come to work, you are going to get better solutions yes. than when making decisions... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Completely. Um, if you're a business leader trying to make it up on your own, <laughs> forget it because mm. you can't. You need to mm. bring people in around you. You need the support of other people and you need ideas in. Mm. If you're a manager and therefore a leader of a team, how are you going to meet your client needs? How are you going to keep mm. business going as much as possible? Um, mm. I was um, talking to beauty salon owners this morning. I was on mm. a podcast. On a, on a Facebook Live with beauty salon owners. Now, they are facing the idea of closing because no one's coming for beauty treatments at this time in mm. the lockdown. And certainly if it gets a, 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 you know, a severe lockdown, yep. they won't be coming. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about how to keep the teams going, and I'm saying keep your regular meetings, keep your social chit-chat, um, use yep. this time to train, um, mm. use this time to learn something new. Um, you know, offering yeah yeah um uh pull them in for creative ideas have your have your have your therapist do little facebook videos to post up mm -hmm. to your clients going hi it's amy here i'm at home hope you're well mm -hmm. any kind of inventive thing that you can do to create connection between yourself and your clients at this time yeah. mm -hmm. human to human personal to personal connection not official emails mm -hmm. this is mm -hmm. amy here I'm yeah. looking forward to. Um, and also, as a manager, paint the picture of what it's going to look like at the other end. There will be a moment when it's lifted and you'll be mm -hmm. back at work. And what's it going yeah. to be like when you get back at work? 
Mm, probably know? a shock to the system. <laughs> So <laughs> be like, hang on, I got oh, used to it. No, I've got, I've got to commute back into the centre of town again. Ugh. And also, like, like Lee's written this lovely comment here about like, don't forget that your pets are also your co-workers. You know, they're yeah. for mm -hmm. emotional support yeah. and focus. So don't, uh, don't know about you, but I couldn't sit here all day without my dog in my office and playing tug of war with one of my socks. So you think about mm -hmm. when you go back into the office, they'll be like, oh, I yeah. would miss those yeah. parts if they were. I think, I think, I think the way in which we work is going to change quite significantly. I think this whole idea of working from home is going to be a much more accepted norm, yeah. and pe mm -hmm. and you know it's just going to happen. And that that, that could yeah. be a benefit that comes out of us all collectively being yeah. thrown mm -hmm. into this thing. And it's, yeah. it's funny. So you you most of you have heard the story. And I randomly with my ex husband, and he is the uh, fitness instructor at the gym. So he teaches the spinning class. So I'm not allowed to call it that anymore. The indoor cycling class. <laughs> Um, and his crew, like, so obviously the, the gyms are shut now. So, cause no one's in the, going into London. So pff, immediate, no income, mm. but it was like the honor, one of the gyms has been able to honor his salary. So that mm. is extraordinary. And then the others, the, the, the punters are all getting together and going, okay, let's, let's do this by video. And they're all buying turbo mm -hmm. trainers for their bikes. So it's like, even though initially it was, it's like, mm. if you breathe and you get creative, like you're saying, come up with new ideas. Actually, people mm. are quite open to trying something new because they want, like, yeah. I, I'd be heartbroken when my beauty salon shuts. That's where I'm going after the show, get my nails done. Um, <laughs> so I'll be like, is there another way? There's a little <laughs> meme going around saying that very shortly we'll be able to know what everyone's natural hair colour is. And oh, I'm mm. it. Exactly. <laughs> I'm thinking. So oh. There's no <laughs> way. Victoria lives just there. She will be rebelling and coming and doing my hair. <laughs> There's no way. I'm going to get so inventive. No, you. Um, that, hey, absolutely. Hair, <laughs> that would be stripes everywhere. Oh, like, shut up, you do. <laughs> <laughs> just be horrific. I'm like, I can't help. Well, so he's, 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 he's trying to flip it a little. Okay, we're on video now. Um, how would you approach slightly more challenging? conversations now as a leader and a manager now they're on video so in person oh, Glenn always has uh, these curveballs he's mean it's Friday yeah, afternoon what do you mean by a challenging conversation Glenn so if you know so case in point you've never maybe you've never managed uh, people virtually before and yeah. you're you're kind of getting mixed messages about their productivity and what they're doing right so you know this this is kind of building up or actually this is this is kind of happening at a time when you're trying to improve the performance of certain people in the teams. How do you keep that kind of continuity? Now, obviously, you're not going to have evidence because when you've got a, when you're in a face to face environment mm. all together in the same room, you can see if someone's not working. You can say, hold on a moment. Mm. Come on. Uh, that kind of thing. Mm. The only thing you can work on when um, is is your perception. Mm. And that's what you talk about. And that's how you introduce the topic. I perceive mm. this. Yeah. And why do you perceive that? So you have to have evidence as to why you think the way you do. Mm. I perceive this because you said you were available at 10 and I phoned at 10 and I didn't get an answer. I perceive mm. this because your colleagues are producing this kind of output in whatever mm -hmm. way it's measured and you're not. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm beginning to get very worried. Um, mm. Is there a problem that uh, I don't know about? Is there something that's mm. preventing you? When you introduce a soft topic, um, allow mm. a little bit of face saving language. Allow them to sort of apologize mm. and give an excuse and gracefully kind of get out of it. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, uh, so that you can kind of go, oh, okay, so that's the problem. We've mm. fixed it now. So I can expect this kind of pro productivity, just like your colleagues uh, going forward. And they'll go, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don, I can't watch daytime telly anymore. So, <laughs> no, yeah. uh, no loose women for me. I quite like Target <laughs> <Hunter's London. laughs> the, the, nice the nice thing about doing about having regular team meetings via video is that everyone else, the other team members, will be saying, "Oh, I've done this. Oh, I've done that. Oh, I've done the other." Mm -hmm. And there'll be this team co um, team expectation cohesion mm -hmm. about the fact that we are still producing despite. And, that, mm -hmm. and there'll be people Wait. who might be sitting there thinking, "Oh shit." You know, I've got to actually up my game here because mm -hmm. these guys are all outperforming me. And mm -hmm. and, I, and in comparison, I don't look so good. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Uh, and do you, do you think, uh, I mean, I, I would say perhaps for leaders, this is an opportunity, right? 
to think about their their leadership style and how they perhaps measure productivity. You know, it's kind of like there's an opportunity genuine learning to be had, you know? Oh yeah, you will be a better manager for going through this experience than not have, because everyone kind of falls into management habits and we all do that. Um, this is going to be challenging because you're going to have to have some real honest com- conversations with staff mm-hmm. around. Oh, and actually inspire them to be creative and come up with creative solutions. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to really work as a manager and a leader to do this. And if you're a manager, even a junior manager, you are a leader. You are it. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have to lead your team. And the solution that you come up with might not be the company line. I don't care as long as it works for you oh, and your yeah. team. You do it. Yeah. You, you you do it. And um, when when mm. this is all over and all the teams come back into the workplace and mm. the big bosses see your team coming in up, motivated, mm. proud, excited about what they achieved, despite some good ideas about how they're going to take things forward. Mm. Who? Your senior manager is going to look at you and go, yeah. wow, mm. wow. Mm. Yeah. Really, it's a really good opportunity to, mm. to, to, to make it and do to something. Reflect. And I think yeah. that also goes back to that by switching off your channels. Because, you know, if I look at my feed, you know, there's a lot of fear, and a lot of scaremongering and a oh, lot of – oh my God, we have to let go 300 staff and we have to do this and we have to do this. All of a sudden, like Glenn said, within two weeks, we've just suddenly decided all of this instead of actually giving it a chance to play out. So actually mm. what you're saying is, again, be a leader. There's a lot of panic. Set an There's example. a lot of panic. Don't buy into the rumour mill. Do not buy into mm. rumour mills, please. Fake news, don't pay any attention to it. Be very mm. careful who you choose to listen to. Mm. They have to be trustworthy mm. for you to listen to. Um, mm-hmm. And then um, also have this realization that we will get through this. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole thing here is to minimize those that are vulnerable, the deaths of those that are vulnerable. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, people first. But the rest of us are going to be fine. We will be fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. we may not be going on a holiday next year because the money's tight. Yeah, we might not be able to buy that new car we wanted. Well, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. some people are going to lose their homes, so let's be a little bit more. Well, <laughs> um, sorry. Yeah. You know, so, I, I go up to a neighbour and I do that thing that you're meant to do, which is, you know, mm-hmm. darling, you've got a dog. If you need me to walk her, let me know. And uh, she just goes, I'll be around. I have no income. And that's, you know, the same things that's happened in this household. And about five or six other of my neighbours. So it's all well and good. Like there are, and she literally goes, I don't know how I'm going to pay the rent and I don't know what our landlord is going to say. And it was, it was genuine, heartbreaking. Yeah. You know, so an answer. We, 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 we're in the knowledge work space and I think there needs to be a little bit more realisation. There of that will be an answer people. because throwing everyone onto the street is not going to work yeah. because yeah. That, will, that will lead to deaths. I think so there's some will... policy enactments around kind of landlords and how they how they approach um, kind of individuals that are kind of either privately renting or sort of uh, kind of council tenants and stuff like that. So I think that there is an acknowledgement at kind of government level that again, knee jerk reactions can't be made if individuals are being financially impacted. So hopefully that will give um, people some level of comfort okay, so around that. Oh, I hear that under this current government, we now have one in fifty two homeless in London. So yeah. one in 201 homeless in the UK. Mm-hmm. So it, I hear what you're saying, and that also is great, but that also means you have to have a, a landlord with integrity, don't you? But mm-hmm. there, uh, and, uh, I know I'm a bit negative, will, sorry. And sadly, there still will be individual well, people who will suffer greatly because of circumstance, because mm. unethical landlords, because, because, because. Mm. But the mm. collective, there will be an answer. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, unfortunately, there's always going to be individuals that are trying to take advantage of situations yes. like this. I I don't know if anybody saw the uh, the kind of news article on the pharmacy yesterday evening that uh, suddenly hiked up the prices of things like cowpole and uh, paracetamol and yes. stuff like that. They uh, very quickly retracted that um, and said that it was a, a kind of rogue email, and some franchises were 
were kind of doing that. But yeah, I mean, look, and it was the same in the it was the same in the kind of oil crisis, right? You know, the petrol crisis, and uh, did not enable them cool. to them, yeah. so they couldn't sell them at inflated prices anymore. Mm. So you know, <laughs> it is interesting how we all ha we're all at liberty now. You know, we're we're all yes, it's all a bit of a mess, but actually. Mm -hmm. We do have power, and we can, mm. you know, and yeah. some of the organisations are taking these things responsibly. Yeah. Exactly, and so, social media has been a driver for that as well, isn't it? Let's be oh, fair. Yes. Something like this, this kind of pharmacy, um, perhaps. I think it was only three or mm. four in the country. Now, social media has obviously gathered pace, highlighted that, and within mm. the, the space of a day, that's been completely retracted. Now, you know, kind of pre social media, that might not have happened because there was no platform for people to to kind of talk and kind of connect and discuss this. So, you know, whilst to, to your point, you know, perhaps social media has fanned the flames a little bit of panic and anxiety, equally, it, it, there is a force for good yeah, yeah. there as well. Of course. Completely. Completely. And um, yeah, and people will remember. Well, people will remember the people that treated them well through this. So, for example, so like yeah. I said, I've lost my trip to Papua New Guinea, which was a dream trip. But the, the way that Intrepid Travel have handled that, I will continue to book with them forever. Like they immediately mm -hmm. said, like, if we have to cancel, you get one and a half percent of what you've paid towards the next trip. Um, but if you cancel, mm -hmm. you get 100 percent. It was like there's no money lost. It's like immediately I know with certainty. And I think that's part of like coming back to the topic with maybe some individual mm -hmm. stress relief tests. I know you've talked about control, but they, yeah. they gave me some certainty. Yeah. This is mm -hmm. what's going to happen. So I'm not worried for. about the money I've paid into that now. I'm like, I'll be OK. Mm. Um, and this is what we're looking for at this moment is certainty mm. and of course there's in some key key elements there's still uncertainty so it's yeah. dangerous so we have to re we have to really kind of remind ourselves of what is still certain I have mm. good friends I have good neighbors I have food mm. in the fridge you know um, I, we're all well at the moment um, you know all that kind of thing and we have to set ourselves into a routine we have to socialize as much as possible and we have to exercise because that's free. Do that's mm. free do mm. dopamine. That's oh, I free. bet you're missing your pool. Oh, mm. <laughs> I am okay. greatly missing. My oh pool. gosh, I do a lot of aqua, and mm. I haven't done any aqua oh. <laughs> for the week. So I'm going to start doing dance. There's a, oh, there's cool. a free. There's a free it's half an hour of dance. It's really funky. Why not? Yeah. Great. Why not? Mm. I must be. I I bought one of those choppers at two hundred quid, so I can stand up at my desk. Mm. I regularly have my eighties pop. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> what can I say? And I'm bopping around, like I'm just moving. Yeah. I might just be moving, but mm. I, it does help when I'm on a low to pull my move it, back. It out. helps. The music helps. The dancing helps. Um, uh, uh, mm. Misty is the one I do. M I S T Y. She's doing a free thing on families dancing together. So get all the kids up and dancing. <laughs> oh, shout out! And shout out to the crazy Claytons who do that on Facebook Live quite regularly. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, exactly and you only did. have to get on to the internet and search. There's loads of experts offering free bits and bobs mm. and things all over the place. Okay, so on that, there are lots of experts offering free stuff. Um, and if they're one of your instructors in the gym, please continue your gym membership. It's something you can do. It's like you can buy. Uh, gift mm -hmm. cards for the beauty salon. There are things that you can do if you know your job's yeah. secure and you're on a salary. Those tiny things. Oh, gosh. Um, mm -hmm. Paul put one out on Facebook that was gorgeous. He was, he was saying buy um, a gift certificate for the supermarket. And if you see someone that you feel needs it, give it to one of the staff members to give to them to pay, which I thought mm -hmm. was just beautiful if you see someone struggling. I, so. think, I think this is this is so important because mm -hmm. small amounts of money yeah. can make a tremendous difference. Huge difference. Absolutely. To that gym coming back, to that gym re-employing, that beauty salon, that that restaurant, that whatever, reopening. They, mm -hmm. they, they, you oh. know, at the beginning of the week, there was a restaurant that you and I nearly went to eat at once, Katrina. Mm -hmm. He sent 45 people home unpaid. <sighs> they had no choice. He, 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 it was a city what do you mean we nearly went to go? That's dreadful. We always go to eat. Anyway, don't, don't tell me, don't tell me. Don't, no, no naming and shaming. That's it dreadful. A restaurant. It was the one down at um, London Bridge. Yeah. Oh, um, okay, yeah. Yeah, and, and he just, he said, this is lunchtime, and it was completely empty. There was not a single soul in the place. Mm. And he had tears in his eyes. I yeah. also feel that one could ring the restaurant and order curbside, if possible. So all the restaurants around me, I can drive up to and get it from the door. I don't have to go in and sit down. 
that's another option if they're open i should say yeah. could you make me this and yeah. i'll grab it from the door my local next yeah. around the corner he's doing takeout and his, his mm. food's good so, yeah um, damn it <laughs> <laughs> no acro and good food <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, you know, like you say, um, it's about kind of being creative and thinking about the solutions. Because at the end of the day, while people may not physically be able to go into your restaurant or your shop, they still yeah. want your product. Um, and if you can find a way to kind of, you know, get those products to them, mm. you know, there's sustainability in, in a kind of business there. And ultimately, yeah, for a restaurant, um, you know, if you've got 45 people that effectively can't work in the restaurant, you've got 45 people that could potentially transport food to um you know people yeah. and stuff like that i mean I, you know with with social distancing in in in, in mind so oh, actually, I think it's just on that anybody who is in that or knows people that you know are about to be laid off in the restaurant trade for example um the farmers are absolutely desperate for people to pick vegetables and fruit desperate mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. there is work out there it mightn't be the work that they want to do or they would choose but we have nobody to pick it it's all that that will create a huge problem. So, um, and we're certainly not people. trying to make this simplistic. We appreciate fully that individuals okay. are, you know, kind of having to make tough choices at the moment. So we're yeah. we're certainly just trying to just offer some some thoughts. Um, yes. Every know, case is individual. Never answer therefore is going to be individual. Individual. Mm -hmm. I think what's also nice for the individuals to see is that you know the the canals are clear in Venice. Mm -hmm. The pollution has passed from. Italy and China, like we're seeing our impact on the planet. So is it actually, do I need to go in person to deliver that facilitation or can I do it online? Like, is oh, there an, you know, it's and I, I think that we need to, I think we humans do need to sit up and take some I responsibility where we can. And I think it's really bringing us together because this, this infection has infected the whole world. There are certain mm -hmm. issues that we need to come together as one, one earth to answer. Mm -hmm. We cannot separate yeah. them. We need to come together yeah. to answer these questions mm. together if yeah. we are to jointly survive. Mm. I agree. 100%. Yeah. Promote community, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's what it's and, about. And it's, and it's happening. It's a text and breathing. Space. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I just talked to Some That's breathing it. space. Like we, a lot of us have just suddenly been given some time to stop and reflect yeah. and maybe just challenge like you were saying be creative it might not be the the way the company's done it but maybe that's the way it needs to do it yes as well yes. sorry i completely cut you off not supposed to cut um, my guest off and if, if we do get laid <laughs> off if we do get laid off or, or reduced working time or whatever like that then there's loads of other things we can do learn italian there's a free course on the bbc to do that um, paint. come and come and sleep on sue's sofa <laughs> You know, there's there's so much that's available for us. This is this is actually an opportunity, and I think that mm -hmm. rather yeah. than than focus on what we're losing, mm -hmm. let's focus on what we can gain from this, which mm -hmm. is great teams, um, real a community, sense of achievement, community. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, there's just so much that we can gain from mm -hmm. this. And this is a real opportunity for us to come out better the other side than when we went in. Let's seize it because it's unique. We'll never get this again, likely in our lifetime. Um, so let's seize it and milk it for all it's worth. Let's make sure we get as much as we possibly can out of it because um, it's going to be tough for a, not just the isolation, but when we come out to the recession, it's going to be tough. Yeah. We're going to have to. Yeah, that but, many negatives. but yeah. we've done but that before. Just, we have. We have. It. We have a lot of people that listen haven't. So, but you we've know they can that. talk to we Gen X who've been through a few and the boomers <laughs> have been through a few. So you know, talk to us. Yeah, we have okay. been there, and I'm telling yeah. you, we will get through it. It will. It. It. it yes. I'll never forget 2008 and that feeling, and this doesn't feel dissimilar. But we will always come back again so yes. let's just come back better this time yes let's just make sure we seize the opportunity and get what we can out of it yeah, mm. Mm. yeah. glenn looked like he wanted to say something it's okay no i i completely agree i think you know for the for the the negatives that we will we will certainly experience over the um the, the coming weeks mm. um if we can start to 
see positives on the other side of that. And I'm not trying to simplify that in any way, simply because, you know, we realize that people are, are losing their lives, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, trying to trying to stay sort of positive. Uh, mm. Positive allows you to support people uh, that are going through tougher times than you. Yeah. Um, and I think if, if we can promote that, you know, one to one and as a team as a community, I think I think we'll definitely come out the other side. Yeah. Um, in a, in, a good, Actually, in a good place. You saying that reminds me of a counter to my negative one I said earlier. There's an elderly lady I walk past her in the dog park. It's usually hi, hi, you know. <laughs> and I stopped and I said, if you need me to walk your dog, I have plenty of time to do so. Let me know, Baba. And honestly, her face lit up because her option was to go and stay with her son and grandson. Of course, there's the fear of the grandson transmitting. Um, yeah. the virus to her but also she's like I really like my own home I'm not sure about living there the whole and it was just like the relief that crossed her face knowing that I can mm. do that you know when it gets to that point where the 70 year olds are tucked away bless them mm. I call it locked up but we better call it tucked away so yeah. you're right you're absolutely right and um, there's a beautiful oh I'm not sure I'm gonna say it. oh I don't know how to say her name I'll I'll this is nice. We've all been able to consciously or unconsciously save the world for some days. Look at it. Reduce carbon, better air, better water. Completely. Lovely comment. Sorry, I just butchered your name. <laughs> so, Sue, do you have any final words that you uh, just think, I really wanted yeah, to get across, breathe or something? <laughs> no, we are okay. Stay in touch with your friends. Choose who you listen to. Exercise and get a sense of achievement out of it. Normalize as much mm. as possible. Set a new routine, and we are going to be fine. Yeah. And um, a bit bored, I think, at some point. But other than that, I think yeah. we, can, we, can, we, can, we can do this. We can, we can do, do this. this. And we'll yeah. just have to have a virtual supper with takeaway. Right. Oh, and I'm up for a glass of wine when anyone wants one. If actually affects yeah. my <laughs> emergency <laughs> list box of wine. is there any left at Saints right anyway oh, I might have to get down there and sort of yeah mm. <laughs> brilliant oh hang on <laughs> oh, oh sorry I'm going to pull this in Hi, Susanna. I like to think the same, Sue Ingram. It is our opportunity to find different ways to live, to be, work, and relate. I think it is about us to find. Uh, it is about us to find certainty in our uncertainty by using our kindness, courage, and resilience as something which holds up, props up props us um we are facing a crisis but like any crisis that lasts for some time and then we can recover and repair ah oh, well Susanna you have just summed Lovely. it up beautifully, beautifully. Thank you. I read it out badly but you summed it up beautifully and I'm sending it just spot on. absolutely spot on beautiful well thank you Sue I know you jumped in last second because we were thank determined you, to grab someone in to talk stress because okay. personally okay. I needed it my it's really all about me. I'm sorry you all had to I suffer because I wanted I it. <laughs> the parties and the hugs that are going to happen when all of this is over. Yeah, oh, and yeah. we are definitely uh, Mark Gilroy, that, at that Mark Gilroy on Twitter. We will be having a sing-along again on Thursday. It's got to be done. Um, and we will be back next week. I have absolutely no idea. It will probably not be whoever's scheduled because we keep pulling in the topics we feel that are relevant for you all right now. So if you, ha if you have mm -hmm. a topic you want covered, shout out as well. Um, thank you yeah. again, of course, Glenn, my gorgeous co-host, Sue, my gorgeous thank you, friend. Thank you so much. Um, and we shall see you all at the same time next week. Our clocks are going to change, aren't they? Or is it still another week? No, it might be another week. I think it's so I think we're still 11 a.m. Eastern and, and uh, 3 p.m. not London time. Greenwich time. Like <laughs> <laughs> I live right near Greenwich. It's like my time. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we shall see you all next week. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Bye. 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 Bye.